Okay, so I've been playing around with lacquer or RetroArch on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is my Pi 4 8 gig and I'm running it at 2325 on an overclock. I'll go through the overclock settings in a minute. I've got the operating system on this Yukon SSD drive. I'm just running my ROMs from a little SD card in a USB adapter. But I've definitely got the best performance I've had on GameCube on the Pi. So I switched into screen capture uh, just to show you how great it looks. And uh, it really does move around really nicely. Now I do get some audio glitches, so it's not all perfect. Um, but you can see that, yeah, it's, it's playable. Uh, and this sort of game, uh, I think that it's running probably as fast as it needs to for most things. Again, it does slow down occasionally, but overall I'm really impressed with how it looks and, uh, and how it's performing. So let's try something else, uh, or let's just jump up here first. Which one's Y? Ah, so X and Y are reversed somehow, um, but that's not too hard to change. Uh, so if I press the home button and the start button, uh, I can go into controls. I did find this, all of the buttons were kind of reversed from what I would like them to be, but they were all configured. So that's the good thing about lacquer is that it is all in there and configurable, but you can swap these around. So A and B and X and Y, I think I had to swap around on Dave Mirror BMX, uh, which is a game I'm so used to playing that I wanted it to be the same controls as I play it on Xbox or PlayStation. But let's go back. Uh, and just show you a few of the games that are in here. This is the very latest lacquer from the nightly builds from the 3rd of April 2022. Uh, so if I go down to see what games, for some reason Tomb Raider doesn't show up in here. Uh, even though I've scanned it several times, it just doesn't show up, but other games do. And one of the most impressive ones, I would say, is Hulk. This works really well. Definitely a lot faster than I've had before. I've tried using Vulcan and I didn't see any performance increase. So I'm going to use OpenGL. But I haven't really had to configure very much on this. Uh, and it is all up and running very, very straightforward. Again, I am using a big overclock. And it's made a huge improvement over the 1500 stock speed. And there is a load of audio settings. So there might be a way of getting, getting away from that kind of distorted audio that you occasionally get on certain games. But the good thing about this is there probably are quite a few GameCube games that will play near full speed. I've only got about 10 on here. Uh, but I'm thinking that if you go for uh, a more modest game, you would probably be all right. This is such an enjoyable game to play. So you can watch, you can pick people up and you can throw them at other people. You can, which ones jump? Yeah, so you can jump and land on them. Like that. Uh, you can pick up the car and chuck it at the screen. <laughs> But it, even when it heats up and loads of things going on, I like to get near the edge here. Where is it? Yeah, you go near the edge, look, and just pick them up and chuck them. Uh, it's certainly a quick way of dispatching them. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a good game. And what's the run like? Yeah, run looks pretty good. But there's all sorts in here. You've got tanks that come against you, the helicopters, all sorts of things. But I would definitely say this looks the best I've had it on Pi and also performs the best. It really is decent to play. Okay, let's try something else. So home and start. Uh, and let's go for close content. And what else was working that was decent? Kelly Slater is pretty good. I've shown this in another video. One of my other videos was getting the audio to come out from the headphone jack, uh, which definitely helps me from screen capture because I can have game audio and run speech at the same time. Let's turn that down a little bit. And all the videos play pretty decent, but I guess they use pretty low res video back in the time when the GameCube was out. All the menus are super fast on this and work really well. As you can see, I can skip right through them. And again, I think this is another example of um, the the buttons being the wrong way around. I don't know which one. Yeah, so tap Y. I don't know which one Y is. I think it might be X. So let's try X when when I get near a wave. Paddle in a bit. Yeah, it is. So X and Y is definitely the wrong way around. And I think it's this jump. Oh, that's terrible. Whoa. What's jump then? B's, uh, B's jump. But again, bad audio, but uh, but perfectly playable, and looks 
pretty decent as well. I used to get lots of glitches and errors on this uh, when I used to use the standard, uh, the standalone Dolphin emulator. But the Dolphin emulator within Lacquer just seems to be really good. Now this isn't on RetroPie yet, but I guess it will come uh, in the future because it's on Lacquer. It should should appear on RetroPie. Uh, that said, uh, there is a 64-bit version which does have this emulator in it, but um, but it isn't in the standard one. And I've got a separate video showing that. So I think you can see that it's it's playing pretty reasonable. It's not going as fast as it should, I'm sure. But uh, it's playable and it's enjoyable. There you go. So let's close that one. Simpsons hit and run. Couldn't get it to go past the launch screen. Smuggler's Run plays, but it is slow. But this is where I'm thinking less demanding games maybe will run all right. And the core and everything was already in this, so you just had to import the games and you're up and running. So really straightforward. So it starts off pretty choppy and the audio is not great. But once you get moving, wow, I mean it's not, it doesn't feel fast, but you can definitely get more of the playability and it's definitely more, it's smoother than it has been. So again, it's just, it's just I'm just glad to see an improvement on it really, because GameCube is a pretty powerful system. So to see this somewhat running, is pretty impressive. Let's just do a little skid there. Yeah. So so not perfect, but but getting better all the time. Now I thought um, Rayman was pretty decent. Super Monkey Ball was really slow for some reason. I would have thought that game would have run. Um, so yeah, Rayman. This is pretty good, but I guess it's probably quite a low resources game. So the audio's good. Yeah, so I think this looks pretty smooth. I am controlling this, this isn't a, a cutscene. That's better. Yeah, everything's so far nice and smooth. Oh, it's still at 60 though. Oh, it dropped down a bit then. Yeah, that definitely feels pretty quick, uh, and it feels nice and smooth. That's probably one of the best so far, really. Just the really hard to run ones are going to be troublesome. So let's quit out of that. Auto model Easter is very slow, so let's show that. Actually, I can probably try, so single race is definitely slow. Let's try a bit of time attack, and uh, maybe turn off the music. That might help performance, although <laughs> that's not very muted. Let's go with the Ford. See if it makes a difference to not have other cars on the track. Audio's a bit garbled. Accelerator looks alright. Oh yeah, but it is pretty sluggish. <laughs> yeah, shame because it looks really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not running anywhere near full speed, is it? And weird because, so 38 FPS for some games would be fine. But uh, for this, I guess this would run at a solid 60. Yeah, what a shame. So let's close that one. And I've just added Tony Hawk, so let's see if I can add that on. So if I go into scanner directory, this is my uh, USB stick, well, it's an SD card in a USB reader. Uh, I put it in my RetroPie, because I use this for RetroPie as well, and I also use it for Recall Box, but at the moment all the ROMs are in here. So if I want to add something on. Let's see if it finds it. There's a lot of folders. GameCube scan this directory and is it going to find Tony Hawk's? Yeah, I did see Tony Hawk's uh, flash up then. Let's see if it shows up because as I say, Tomb Raider didn't show up on the menu. Yeah, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, which I think is the first one on GameCube, so I figured I'd give that a try. Tony Hawk's is often very well optimized, but uh, I haven't tried this yet. So let's hit run. Okay, let's go free skate. The menus have got a bit, yeah, the audio's a bit distorted. There might be some options I can change. There's loads of options in the menus to be able to change. Ah, it's going to run too slow. What a shame. Actually runs worse than Dave Mirror, but then I guess it's probably a later a later game. I can't I can't remember on the timeline of when these came out, but yeah, it's it's clearly too slow. The resolution looks great though, which is such a shame because it's such a nice game. So let's close that. 
and one of my favourite games of all time, Dave Mira Freestyle BMX 2. Uh, now, this was totally unplayable before. It is, I wouldn't play it on this because I can play it on my, my MacBook plays this perfectly and in fact I'm, I'm trying to play through the whole game on my MacBook. But uh, just to show how much progress there is in this build, it is definitely way better. Oh, and I think I set up a uh, save state on this. So if we do load state, yeah, I did. Oh, audio's not great. And I've also reversed the buttons on this. Although I don't know if it's um, I don't know if it's taken or not. No, it hasn't. So they've revert reverted back. Yeah, actually, it's about the same. I think it, occasionally, it's, it speeds up depending on where you are in the park or something. But this is way way better than it was. Yeah, the buttons have gone gone back to uh, the wrong settings because that should yeah. Okay. So get in there, but still not playable. So I guess the thing is that uh, as long as you pick the right games, you may be okay on GameCube, but don't pick anything ambitious. So I've booted up my favorite OS at the moment, KDE in Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, uh, which is running from this crucial SSD drive. And you can still see my, I've got basically a 128 gig SanDisk card in a little USB adapter. That's where all my ROMs are. So let's have a look at that. So this drive is formatted as FAT32 by Raspberry Pi Imager because it makes it super compatible with everything really. And uh, so we have a look at it. You can see I've got, I've got all sorts of stuff on there. Um, but the key thing for the ROMs, all my ROMs are in here, RetroPie dash mount. Uh, and that means that it will be recognized by RetroPie. This is the layout for RetroPie. You don't need to do all of this for lacquer. Um, but if you do it for lacquer, um, if you use the RetroPie one, you can just navigate to the ROMs and find them in there. So you can see I've got uh, in GameCube, which is the GC folder. There you go. So there's the ROMs and some of those will be save files. That's why there'll be more than one of each. Uh, my Tony Hawk's, the one I downloaded was um, a 7-zip file and it actually unzipped on my iPad. I just clicked on it and it unzipped and then I just transferred it over to the stick. So uh, we're getting much better support on iPads now. I only downloaded it on my iPad because that's what I was using when I thought, oh, let's try Tony Hawk's. Uh, I shouldn't have bothered because the performance was terrible on it, but never mind. So let's eject that one because that's where all the ROMs are. I don't need that one. I'm going to plug in my lacquer drive. So let's unplug that one and I've got 128 gig SanDisk SD card in there. That's where all my ROMs are. And it's just, I transfer it between system and system and uh, it's just something I use for testing purposes. And let's plug in. Uh, so I've had a few questions recently about SATA cables. I kind of went through this ages ago. Um, some are much more compatible than others. The Ugreen one is always in my description and uh, it is a great compatible one. I often use this iTrust one, which I could only find in the UK. I couldn't find it on Amazon.com, but uh, only just because it's really short and this is very long. Although I do like the way that when it's plugged in, it, uh, it's going off to the side rather than going straight out. But let's plug that one in and it comes up to show you what drives are plugged in. So let's go to the lacquer drive. So I think this one's the boot one. Yeah, so I've added to the config.txt. You can see here, over voltage equals 15, arm frequency equals 2325, GPU frequency equals 950, and force turbo equals one. Obviously overclock at your own risk. This is a very high overclock. I'm using a fan and an ice tower cooler, and it definitely doesn't get hot at all but you can still damage your device by overclocking. It was from my video winning the silicon lottery. Uh, I had this tip from Matthew Tew uh, and uh, I basically just copied the settings that he'd sent to me and, uh, and they've been working fine on my Pi 4 8 gig with lacquer. So I haven't changed anything else in config.txt, so let's close that down. So I used Raspberry Pi Imager for this. So the download came from the official website and it was one of the nightly builds. Uh, let's see if I can find it. So get get like a, check out our latest development versions. And there'll be another one, Raspberry Pi 4. You can see there's some for portable devices here as well, um, but I use this one, the Arch64 one, and there'll be a newer one now. Yeah, this is a day newer than the one I had. So you're downloading this one here, uh, the 843 megabyte one. So I've downloaded the previous one, and then I use Imager, 
to write that to my SSD drive. You don't need to format it or do anything like that. I sometimes get asked about big drives. Uh, Raspberry Pi Imager seems to be able to format any size of driver. I think the biggest I've done is 750 gigabytes and it's always worked fine for me. So use custom. And there you can see there's my one from the 3rd of April. Click on that, choose your storage. You can see that's my 60 gig. And then you would hit right, which I'm not going to do because I've already done it. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.